Hi, right, buddy. Welcome back to Ox Talks. Uh, it is Wednesday, April 3rd, 2024. I'm sitting here with a good friend of mine, Patrick. Uh, Patrick's in town for about a week or so with his family. And so we took the time today to come up here to the range and get some training in, uh, talking about sidearms, talking about self-defense and, you know, what we all should be doing from our perspective to make ourselves more resilient, make ourselves, put ourselves in the be best position possible to be able to defend ourselves and our family should something happen. Uh, and, you know, as we know, a lot is happening right now uh, around this country with a, a lot of issues that are, that are coming up. Crime is increasing. We know the immigration problem is getting worse. So we're just trying to better ourselves. There's a chance for us to kind of catch up, talk a little business and uh, do some shooting today. So I wanted to walk, uh, welcome Patrick to the channel. Hey, thanks, Matt. Happy um, to be here. Patrick is, uh, owns his own business. We talk about this all the time on this channel. It's so important from my perspective to become your own boss, own your own business. Patrick is, is running, has run a very successful um, watch. Um, he's a very successful watch dealer for how, how many years now? And 13 years. 13 years. So I think I probably met you back just a couple years after you started the business. Yep. Uh, so Patrick owns OC Watch Guides in Orange County, California. Uh, go, ahead, go check out his, uh, his website. Uh, you know, he does all kinds of uh, time pieces. You can get $1,000 watches up to $250,000 watches or even more. So if that's something you guys like, uh, go check it out. A very, very honest guy, reputable guy to, to deal with here. But I wanted to bring Patrick on to introduce him, but also to talk about uh, the, a few months ago, I did a show about the $106,000 uh, wire transfer that a friend and client of mine had taken out of his account uh, by the originating bank uh, in a situation that left him, uh, you know, speechless, so to speak. And I, I've covered it on a video. I updated you guys, I think, recently, just briefly, that it had been resolved, fortunately, uh, in Patrick's uh, uh, in Patrick's favor. And the $106,000 was finally returned by Bank of America to his account. But I wanted to bring Patrick on to explain the transaction to you guys and lay out what happened, and then we'll, we'll we'll fill you in on what recently took place to get it resolved, and what we believe was the catalyst that helped Patrick to bring this to a head, so that B of A uh, credited the the wire transfer back to his account. But if you recall, the originating bank was J.P. Morgan Chase, correct? It was, yeah. And Patrick's bank is B of A, where he has his business operating account. It wasn't a one-time transaction. Uh, he ran the transaction through his regular business account. So I talked to a banker friend of mine and said, well, you know, you know, a lot of times if the money is pulled out right away once the wire comes in, the bank can't take it back out. But in this case, if you have an ongoing business, your goal is not to receive a wire transfer and necessarily go pull it out the next few hours or the next day. You leave it in there for operating expenses, to buy more, to buy more merchandise, whatever it is, yeah. right? Yeah. Keep okay. business going. So explain to us, if you don't mind, what the what the transaction was, how did it start and, and with the wire transfer? So the order, um, we take orders through our website, uh, client put, the, put an item in the cart, place an order. From there, they get our bank wire instructions. We get their information, name, address, um, ship to details. So once the uh, wire instructions are forwarded off, the client sends off the wire. Well, once we receive it, clear the wire, verify it matches the sender's name. We, in turn, overnight the watch uh, to the client. In this case, it was three watches, right? So in this case, uh, it was three separate orders, uh, oh. two on one day and one the following day. Um, once the wires were cleared, we went ahead, sent off the watches, and um, the items were delivered to the customer on the order name, signed for by that customer, and approximately 10 days after the receipt of the goods, we received a notice that the total sum of 106,000 was placed on a hold. Uh, so when I calculated the three, three items, it, it totaled that 106,000 and immediately I knew what it was in regards to. Uh, so I got on the line with Bank of America and at that time I was advised, hey, supply us everything you've got on this transaction, email correspondence, order confirmation, FedEx tracking, uh, so which I did. Um, and this was dating back to October of uh, 2023. So fast forward, um, is about five months uh, until the funds were released uh, with virtually no communication from Bank of America. So wait, help me stop you. So f for five months, uh, you had $106,000 of your money 
that was that was tied up by B of A. Yes. And and as I understand it, B of A put this money on hold because Chase Bank reached out to B of A or J.P. Morgan Chase, and, and I guess they filed what's called a hold harmless claim. I think you learned after the fact that's what they called it, right. asking that um, they be held harmless from having to pay that wire. Correct. Right. Okay. And so B of A complied with that request. Right. They complied with the request and by holding the funds. Okay. And did the B of A ever tell you initially why they were obligated to comply with the request? Did they give you any feedback? No, zero. Okay. Uh, no information was given. Okay. And as I recall, I, I wrote an email or two, or actually I was caught, you, you used my name on a couple of emails, we sent some communications, and there was nothing really that was done, correct? Didn't they initially appoint somebody as a liaison or a, a, to, to head up like an investigation? Yeah, so um, we emailed the office of the president that initiated a, a courtesy call that we would be, um, they, we were advised we would hear from the investigator in charge of this claim which never happened. Um, so that was about the extent of communication was a customer service follow-up call to the email. Uh, but the investigator um, at, or the security department never reached out to fill us in or ask for more information or keep us advised at any point. Okay, so guys, a wire cleared. Patrick shipped the timepieces after the wire cleared. It was not even right away, correct? It was yeah, the following day. Following day. Uh, and then the money was brought back out of the account. So fast forward now, five months later, uh, you were finally, as I understand it, uh, you were finally able to get someone to give you a tip that you acted on in terms of communicating uh, with B of A, explain what you did, what department you contacted. This is very important for you guys to pay attention to this. I'd never heard of this, but we think this is what kind of brought the curtain down, so to speak, and forced B of A to take action of ultimately returning the money. But go ahead, what, what, was, what did you learn? It was from a friend of yours? Yeah, so I was given the contact information for the ethics line for Bank of America, uh, where it's a third party that handles claims or complaints against the bank. Um, so I went ahead and filed a claim and that is what got their attention um, ultimately. And within two days of that final claim being made, uh, the funds were released and then I re received this confirmation letter. Um, so in that claim, you just go over your details and uh, what, what, the, what the transaction is and essentially they're forced to comply or respond. So I'm just, I have the letter that Patrick received. I'm not going to read the whole thing, uh, but it says, uh, thank you for contacting us. We appreciate the time you took to share your concerns. I am pleased to advise that the hold harmless claim filed by J.P. Morgan Chase has been denied. After reviewing your supporting documentation and confirming the tracking numbers provided are valid, it was confirmed that the funds sent, that were sent to you were legitimate. Guys, it took five months to get the action on this. So that was using the ethics hotline, in that case for B of A. So whatever bank you're with, if you're unfortunate enough to find yourself in this kind of a situation, I hope you're not. But if you are, that might be something that you can use to facilitate, to force a resolution. Uh, because we, we, that, we were coming up with, with, with no information and no answers, no resolution over a several month period. So I wanted to have Patrick come on, explain that to you. I, I think I mentioned in a show previously, I have a friend of mine here who's the vice president of a local, a regional bank. And, um, and he, you know, I've asked him for clarification on it. Uh, and, and how this can actually happen. But there are evidently, there are procedures evidently on the books in the banking regulations where an originating bank with a wire transfer can later on uh, file what's called this hold harmless claim with the receiving institution. In this case, Bank of America acted on it. As I, as I recall, didn't Bank of America initially ask you, uh, we have some uh, shots in the background. We are at a live range here, so forgive the background noise. But this is what we're this is what we're doing today. But didn't uh, Patrick, um, as I understand it, uh, you were initially told uh, by B of A? Didn't they ask you if you consented to them pulling the money back out? Did they give oh, you the option? Right. Yes. So originally, I did. Uh, yes, I, I forgot that. So originally, um, I had received a call from our local branch manager where our account is housed. And he, he, um, he mentioned that the wires were being recalled and if, if we authorize it to be recalled. And we denied that since the watches were delivered. 
Um, and he assured me that the funds wouldn't be recalled. Um, and it was several days after that, that it was indeed recalled. Yeah, very good point. So these must be powerful yeah, books. These yeah. must be powerful rules and regulations on the books, guys, that these banks can do whatever they want with impunity. In this case, it was, uh, fortunately for Patrick and for his business, it was a happy ending. And fortunately uh, for Patrick, you know, he's deep enough in terms of resources that he was able to weather this storm. He had resources. He was able to keep buying merchandise and running his business for the last five months uh, while he was patient to get this resolved. But for a, for a small business operator, for someone just starting their business, that could have, I mean, that could literally be the difference between you uh, staying in business or going out of business, uh, you being a, a, you know, a thriving entity or a bankrupt uh, operator. So uh, we wanted to share this with you today. I hope you got something out of it. Uh, we'll, we'll leave it there today. Uh, as always, I, I talk about the fitness on the show every day. Patrick is big into fitness as well. He does a, what, a daily, a daily routine, about an hour. Yep. Okay, right. we, we both do about daily fitness, uh, an hour of fitness every day. Get the steps in, get that cardio work in, guys, please. We were discussing diet a bit earlier. Uh, do something that works for you and just make smart choices. You can make healthy choices. You can control your portions, which has a major impact, um, you know, not only how you feel, but how you act, your, your, your manner, and of course, ultimately, your weight and your health. So keep that in mind. Everyone stay healthy. We need to work on that as a nation. With that being said, uh, we'll leave it there today. Hopefully I'll see all of you tomorrow. Thanks again, Patrick. Appreciate hey, you. Okay. All right. Yeah, Bye guys. See you tomorrow.